Hey, it's Cardi, Steve Cardi, photographer. Welcome. This is Cardi in the Studio Podcast, and today I'm answering your questions via FanBridge. I am asked tons of questions, so I figured video answers would be the fastest way. So, Steve, I love your work, your insights about the iPad and Apple products. I was curious to know which software do you use for building your website? Congratulations and keep up the good work. Okay, software. Um, I don't really use software specifically to make my website. It's all created custom by my coder. You can find him at Muir, M-U-H-R, on Twitter. He designs these custom templates that after I give him the flats, which are the web um, visuals that I would like it to look like, he turns it into something that works. And he does this with, um, he's a software engineer, so he writes code manually. Um, he uses Dreamweaver to check, and, um, and then it gets back-ended into WordPress. So I have WordPress as a data management system for my website. So hopefully that helps. Um, everything's done custom. Uh, yeah, there's some nice uh, templates out there for WordPress, but um, I don't know. I'd recommend finding a designer and finding a coder and getting someone to put something together for you that no one else has. My recommendations. Okay, um, rapport. Do I spend a lot of time getting to know the people that I'm taking portraits of before even busting out the camera? How do you make important connections to make the subject comfy and open up? Well, um, the way that I put it is this. The camera is so secondary when I shoot portraits, it's hilarious. Uh, I don't really touch the camera or think about the camera until right before I shoot. I might have my light meter or um, Sometimes I have to move equipment around a little bit, but most of the time I have an assistant and it's just about rapport. I hang out with the subject, you know, we banter about stuff and I describe what I'm going to do. And then usually an assistant will sit in and I'll snap a two or three frames of them and show my subject and then on we go to the portrait. It happens really fast and um, I try to be disarming when I shoot so there's no pressure and I'm a bit of a mirror. I, I like to think of myself as a mirror, so there's not too much direction, although there's a little bit. So it's all about rapport. Um, the camera doesn't come out until later, and uh, right before I shoot, that's when you see me sitting behind the camera. So, um, is a handheld light meter really still essential? Some say they're not essential anymore um, if you're trying to keep it cheap. What's wrong with just um, chimping out and checking your histogram for your exposure? Um, I use handheld light meter whenever possible, which is, it's almost always possible unless you're shooting live or weddings or event coverage and stuff like that. If you're doing anything deliberate, you need a light meter. It gives you the most accurate reading possible. Um, you always aim the dome at camera, which is something that people are aiming it at the light, at the window, at their family, whatever. Like, you always have to aim the dome at the direction that the camera is pointing. And um, you can't use flash with, um, without, a, without a handheld light meter. So flash and um, accuracy is uh, get a light meter. Don't cheap out. Um, you look like you're cheaping out if you don't have a light meter. And you can't wing it because if you've never used a light meter, you would likely have no idea what proper exposure actually even looks like. So get a meter and um, learn up. Okay. Um, okay. Is there a tablet uh, that I recommend or discourage for someone without any tablet experience? Um, what I would say is a bamboo from Wacom. Uh, they're a hundred bucks and a uh, hundred bucks, it's, it's something that you have to invest time in because the Wacom tablet and just getting used to going from a mouse as like the operations of your computer um, to using the mouse to operate your computer and using a tablet for retouching. It's not like you use a tablet for everything. You only use it when you're pushing pixels on a picture, that's, that's it. Um, it takes about a week to two weeks to actually get a sense of what it, it's like to use, but once you get to that point, it's, it's fine. You, you never look back. So it's a time investment, and uh, once you get past the initial time it takes to learn the dexterity with controlling your computer with a pen, um, you'll never look back. It's amazing. So get a tablet, um, something from Bamboo, something from Wacom, and the bigger the better. Uh, if you need to move it around, get a small one. If 
it's gonna live on your desktop and get the biggest one you can afford because if you're doing any time retouching, um, you pay for it after if you're doing a lot of retouching on a very small tablet. Carpalitis. Um, okay, what are my favorite competitions, photo competitions to enter? Um, very simple, Applied Arts, American Photo, and Photo District News, also known as PDN. Okay, um, what keeps me shooting in Canada since it's so hard to make ends meet? Do you spend a considerable amount of time in the U.S., or has the um, economy situation in the U.S. made it difficult to get a green card? Um, there's a market if you're good, period. Um, if you're in a metropolitan, Montreal, Toronto, Vancouver, um, those are the three majors in Toronto, in, I mean in Canada, or in America, I mean, there's a lot of brain drain to, the, to America, and there's a lot of jobs that are still shot here. The photographers that stay and that are good work. It's just about marketing and understanding the market. Um, a lot of photographers um, make excuses. So don't be one of those guys, just hustle. Um, okay, so Jessica Alba, Gwen Stefani, or Lucy Liu. Which one would you pick for making an artistic nude photo shoot? Um, Lucy Liu. Okay, what video camera would you prefer to use most for web content? and television content, what bit rate are you shooting at, or would you love your cameras to boast? Um, double barreled question, I know. Um, all that shit, it's not my area of expertise. Um, <laughs> I'd say ask Vanderplug, or um, yeah. I'm a director, I'm not like a gear junkie. I know the red is the shit, so shoot on the red if you can. If you can't shoot on the red, um, shoot on a 7D, 5D. 75 Ds, they have limitations, but if you understand it and understand exposure and color balance, um, you can get some pretty good, nice, 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 nice stuff. Um, so, I don't know, it's, it's really, the camera's a tool. Whatever video camera you have, learn it and figure out what it does and um, how to get the best stuff from it and um, lock and capture. Okay, um, hey Steve, I'm wondering how I can get models from real agencies to test with me. Maybe it's impossible, but I find it difficult to find models who are good at it. Most have no experience. Um, the answer to that is, it's really how good you are as a photographer and how hard you hustle. I know a bunch of photographers, um, some of which have been my past apprentices, that just based on talent um, and model mayhem, they've got a couple of almost models and those models have made it so they've got agency models and once you have one agency model it like one model begets another 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 it's hard sometimes to get on the wheel but again a lot of photographers just stand on the outside and complain about like what they can't do instead of just calling someone going to an agency saying hello being friendly showing the work that you have and begging i mean it happens you just there's always a need for good photographers. There's always a need for photographers to shoot models. And um, don't expect to get paid if you're new, especially shooting models from agencies. Do it for free with a smile. Okay. So, um, hey Steve. Uh, what makes a great portrait? Um, wow, this is pretty objective. Um, whew. Um, luck, mostly, I think and technical expertise. It's the ability to see moments and um, as they're happening, it's like um, liquid. Um, the whole portrait session should feel like whitewater rafting. Um, it's quite, and at the same time, you're shooting pictures along the way. You're, you're traveling somewhere and enjoying it and, and shooting the whole time. Um, a true master um, never sees themselves as great. A true master portrait photographer, fashion photographer, um, they'll say they suck. So um, they just do, like that's the thing, like I really, I just shoot, I just, I'm a mirror for that day. Over time your style comes out if you're dedicated and, um, and you have due diligence when it comes to what you do. Um, yeah, there's really um, <laughs> no formula for a great portrait, it doesn't exist, but there's millions of amazing portraits out there and each one of them has their own unique quality so um, it's not math you can't break it down so you just shoot um, so uh, were you shooting hot stuff from the beginning how did you evolve and develop your style um, I popped out of the womb with a Hasselblad and an attitude 
Um, <laughs> seriously, I've been developing my craft as a photographer um, since I was 19. Um, less seriously, since I was 14. Um, I've always shot portraits, I've always shot people pictures, and um, after a while, uh, you get it. it. It clicks. For me, it happened somewhere around year five that I just understood what it was that I was trying to do, and um, I just, I've been doing that ever since. Um, okay, so, and I also look at the masters. Look at the masters, like look backwards at what happened before you on the timeline of the history of photography, because it really helps um, sort of show you where the current contemporary photography is going. When does photoshopping an image of a person become an outright lie? Um, we are all different shades. How can you make sure that you've got the right shade or tone? Um, it's all about flattery as far as um, lighting and shooting people. Um, it's also purely objective as far as how far people go with retouching and Photoshop. As far as skin tone, it's all about exposure. You need a handheld light meter. You can't wing it with your exposure or use the camera's reading because the camera lies. The camera is usually off in exposure from a third to a full stop under. And if you're aiming at something that's backlit, up to two or three stops under. So um, the camera lies. Using a handheld light meter helps you with all aspects of photography, including rendering skin tones, how they're supposed to render, which is accurate. Um, as far as retouching, it's all objective. Some people go really far. Body modifications, slimming, flawless skin. Other photographers, um, and the real trend right now is real. And um, there's some magazines like uh, Intersection in the UK or Antenna Magazine you know, in New York that they tell photographers no retouching, like we show pictures as is. So um, the renaissance in film is sort of crossing over into digital with um, the look of digital being shot um, untouched, like this is exactly how it came out of my camera. So um, that being said, that's the last question that I'm going to answer today. This has been Steve Cardi in the studio. This is the podcast. Thanks for watching.